All right, y'all, so for today's class, we are going to be finishing up body systems interactions. So we're going to be finishing up um, stuff on animal body systems, and then you're going to be doing your uh, interactive notebook, section one, and your exit ticket based on the information that we go over today in this ed puzzle. So first off, if you are in person, please make sure that you have filled out your contact tracing. And if you're both in person and virtual, please make sure that you fill out your attendance form so that when I double check attendance at the end of the day, you are marked present if you were here or if you were here asynchronously. Okay, so as our learning objective, learners will be able to begin to explain organ systems interactions by completing an ed puzzle and working on their interactive notebook. So basically what I just explained earlier. So in your own words, I will let you Google it. Please define homeostasis for me. Now, if you copy and paste this, I'm not giving you credit for it. So make sure that you, like, you Google it and then you try to process it in your own words and then just write it in a simple explanation, like how you would explain it to a family member who doesn't really know science or how you would explain it to maybe a younger sibling. Okay, cool. And our second question is, what system is mainly in charge of keeping your body healthy? I know there are multiple, but there is one main one that we are going to talk about a lot today. I just want to see if you know it. Which one keeps our body healthy? Cool. So basically, homeostasis is one of the main themes we're going to go over today for the reasons why your body interacts. And um, we kind of already explained it in the last ed puzzle, right? Because it's what keeps your body regulated. It keeps everything in a state that um, keeps you alive so that you have your temperature, your pH, right, your salt levels in your body. All of those things need to be regulated so that you can have living conditions within your body. If one of those goes to an extreme end outside of the normal range for life, then it causes serious problems like blood toxicity, right? It can cause even almost instantaneous death if um, those levels are not regulated and kept in check. And the uh, system that is mainly in charge of keeping your body healthy, of course, is the immune system. And we talk about that a lot. And it's super important right now, especially because it's flu season in the middle of our corona pandemic. So your immune system is working overdrive right now to make sure that you stay healthy. And especially if you're not sleeping enough. So sleeping really does help with you keeping your body healthy and making sure your immune system works its best and eating properly. So let me move so I can, yeah, there we go. So health is a super important part that we're gonna talk about right now. And a lot of your body systems do interact in order to keep you healthy and functioning properly. So the body is constantly being attacked by intruders. For example, bacteria, fungi, parasites, viruses. Can y'all give me one example of any of these that you know that are attacking our body? For example, the most common one right now is the coronavirus. Give me a different example. Right. Other examples include like the cold, the flu. You can get like parasites, like tapeworms. You can get um, fungal infections, like ringworm. So all of those things are things that your body is being attacked by. There are systems in your body that work together to prevent infections or fight them if they already happen. Right. So a fever is an example of what happens when you're fighting the infection. Coughing, sneezing. Those are all symptoms of your body defending or retaliating against these infections that are happening. And generally you succeed because um, if you don't succeed, you die. Okay. So most of the times these systems are working hard. And the reason why you're not sick 24 seven, even though you are being attacked 24 seven is because your immune system and its partners are all working really hard all the time. And most of the time they are succeeding. Okay, when they do have a little slip up, that's when you actually get an infection and then they work overdrive to fix it, which is why you feel extra tired and extra lethargic and you feel like you're kind of overworked when you are actually showing symptoms of being sick because your immune system and your other body systems have to work extra hard to get rid of something that they could have prevented. So the first system that works um, to keep you healthy and keep you in um, great working conditions is the integumentary system or your skin system. Remember we talked about this. And so the first thing it does is it works with the excretory system to help you remove cellular waste. For example, sweating helps remove toxins from your body, right? The second one is that it works with your nervous system 
because it helps control your body temperature. Remember, the insulation right under your skin helps you maintain body temperature so you aren't fluctuating severely. When you go outside, you don't instantly become cold. When you are really hot outside um, in the summer, you don't instantly boil up, right? Because your skin provides a, la a layer of insulation. Um, when it's really cold outside too, you get goosebumps so that your hairs are trying to trap as much heat close to the level of your skin as possible. And then when it's really hot, you also sweat so that when the sweat evaporates off, um, it takes some of the heat with it so you can stay cool. Because if you overheat, you can get really, really sick just from that, right? Heat stroke is a really bad thing. And then lastly, relating to health, the integumentary system reacts, sorry, interacts with the immune system to prevent pathogens from entering. And I explained this before where if you didn't have an integumentary system, all of your muscles and blood vessels and um, tissues would all be like, sticky and exposed to the air and anything in the air could get into your body because you didn't have this protective layer on the outside okay so infections would happen super easily if you don't have this layer on the outside and so therefore having it enables our immune system to not have to deal with as many things okay so that being said i want you all to in your own words explain to me one interaction that the integumentary system has with another system and what it's doing to keep you alive cool so the next system obviously is our great old immune system. So the immune system works with the circulatory system because both of them are in charge of transport, uh, transporting WBCs or white blood cells to fight invaders. The immune system also works with the lymphatic system because both of them are in charge of making the white blood cells to fight invaders and storing them, okay? So the spleen filters out bacteria and viruses out of the blood, kind of similar to how the kidney does for other toxins but the spleen specifically does it for body invaders, okay? And that's part of the lymphatic system and therefore part of an interaction with the immune system. The immune system works with the skeletal system because all blood cells are produced in the bone marrow of your bones, okay? So even white blood cells, we mostly think of red blood cells when we think of blood, but the white blood cells are also made in your bone marrow. And so if you didn't have any white blood cells, your immune system wouldn't work. So therefore the immune system has to interact with the skeletal system. Okay. And lastly, like we just said, the immune system works with the integumentary system to prevent invaders from getting into your body. Okay. So that being said, give me one interaction that the immune system has with another body system and how that interaction keeps you alive. Alrighty. Next is the lymphatic system. As you can see, it's got the lymph vessels, the lymph nodes, your tonsils. Some kids get the tonsils removed when they're younger because they get inflamed and they actually become a source of infection instead of helping you prevent it. So that's the reason why some people have their tonsils removed. Your thymus gland, your spleen, we just talked about, and your bone marrow are all part of the lymphatic system. Now, this system interacts with the immune system because they both hold like the white blood cells that fight pathogens or invaders or infections, like I just said. The lymphatic system is also closely tied and interacts with the circulatory system because both of them have vessels that transport materials around the whole body to and from cells to make sure that infections are fought and that wastes from fighting infections are removed. Okay, give me one interaction that the lymphatic system has with another system and tell me what are they doing to keep you alive? The next big function that we're gonna talk about is defense, okay? You ever heard of fight or flight? Because that's something that a lot of people talk about. So when you encounter something scary or life-threatening, a lot of people have this either fight or flight response, right? Is your first thing to save your own life going to be to run away or to confront the agonist? Right? People usually are 50-50 split, but recently there's also been a, a new discovery of a freeze option. So some people are like a deer in headlights when they get scared of something and they just freeze on the spot. And these are all part of your defense mechanisms and how your body is going to best process the information of what is happening and then deal with it to best help you survive. Okay. So protection of your body is a huge part of your built-in mechanical systems, like your body systems. You don't even have to think about these because they happen regardless of whether or not you actively think about them, okay? So an example is reflexes. If you accidentally touch something really, really hot, even before your brain registers that it's hot, your nerves in your hand will cause you to jerk your hand away quickly because they already sense that something is wrong. And that doesn't even register in your brain until maybe your hand has already been taken off of the hot thing that it was too hot for you to touch. 
that's because sometimes the nerves react from the hand to your spine right back to your hand instead of transferring all the way up to your brain because that message takes too long and by the time it got to your brain you would have gotten hurt so there's super cool things like that built into our body that help us stay alive so the first system we'll talk about is the endocrine system and we know this one is the hormone system and the endocrine system interacts with the circulatory system because you can make all the hormones you want, but you need the circulatory system to transport the hormones to all of the organs that are being targeted. The endocrine system also works with the nervous system to maintain homeostasis, right? Hormones are released based on certain periods of growth in your lifetime or certain periods of development in your lifetime, whether you can actually see it or not. And your brain is the one that knows when those are happening. So your brain and your homeo, sorry, your nervous system, including your brain and the endocrine system interact together to make sure that development is happening at the right times at the right speed. The endocrine system also works closely with the reproductive system because it, they both control hormones and they both produce hormones to help through puberty, sexual development, they also help with for females during pregnancy and even after pregnancy to change the body to make sure that the baby is being made properly and that afterwards the body reverts back to being able to produce more babies. And the last interaction on this page with the endocrine system is with the skeletal system because as you are growing, the endocrine system is the one that produces the hormones that cause your bones to elongate or grow your endocrine system didn't interact with your skeletal system, you'd be the same height you were when you were born. And some people would have only been like 10 inches tall. So give me one interaction that the endocrine system has with another system and explain how is that keeping you alive? The nervous system, this is kind of a funny way to explain this, but the nervous system is basically your main control center. So a way to explain this is that it controls all other systems. Okay. All other systems, whether you are purposefully controlling them or you are not purposefully controlling them, are interacting with the nervous system. Remember, we said, for example, the respiratory system interacts with the nervous system. Whether or not you're thinking about your breathing, you're always breathing because your brain has a switch that when you think about it, you're going to be able to control your breathing. But when you're not thinking about it, you still got to stay alive. So your brain wants that to happen. So it'll control your breathing automatically for you. Same with your heartbeat. You don't actually ever have to actively control those, right? Your stomach digesting is controlled by your brain. So your digestive system tells when food has to be passed down, what's going to happen at each part of your digestive system when the food is being passed down. Your nervous system is what pushes your heart to pump all the blood through your veins so that then it can also go to the excretory system and be filtered through to be cleaned, right? Your nervous system also tells you that your outside is cold, so your skin is going to produce goosebumps to try to um, raise the hairs and trap heat underneath, right, to maintain your body temperature so you don't get too cold. So the hypothalamus, for example, is the one that you uh, maintains homeostasis by working with all systems, and it's part of your brain. And if you are actively thinking about things, some of them you can control. And if you are not actively thinking about parts of your body, the hypothalamus is doing that job for you. Okay. So like one of the examples I might've explained earlier, just put it in your own words, or you can look one up. Explain to me one interaction the nervous system has with another body system. Remember, it interacts with all of them. So this should be pretty easy. And tell me what they are doing to keep you alive. The muscular system interacts with a lot of systems to make sure that you're protecting your body and staying alive as well. So the first one is, we've already answered this on the other exit ticket, that the muscular system interacts with the skeletal system to allow movement, right? Without any structure, no matter how much the muscles pull, it's really hard to move. But when the skeletal system provides a body structure, the muscles have something to pull and tug on, and it makes it easier to produce movement. Um, muscular systems also interact with the digestive system because they allow the organs to contract and push food through your digestive system to do the whole process of eating, absorbing nutrients, and removing the solid waste. The third one is the muscular system interacts with the respiratory system because your entire diaphragm is one sheet of muscle across the bottom of your rib cage. And when it pulls down, it opens your lungs up to pull air in. And when it pushes up, it causes the lungs to shrink and push air out. Okay, so without the muscles, you can't breathe. The muscular system also interacts with the circulatory system because, for example, your heart is one of the most important organs and um, muscle-based organs in your body. And without that, you don't have the pump that, produce, that pushes all the blood out to the extremities of your body and brings them back in to make sure that the oxygen and nutrients are circulating throughout your body. 
The muscular system also works with the nervous system because all muscle contractions, whether they are voluntary or involuntary, are based on your nerves. So give me one interaction that the muscular system has with another body system and tell me how is that keeping you alive? The last interaction that we'll go over today is the skeletal system's interactions with other body systems. And the first one is, like we said, for, um, for movement, it's with the muscular system, right? If you just have a skeleton but no muscle, you can't move. If you just have muscles but no skeleton, you can move but not efficiently. So together they work together to make efficient movement for wide ranges and wide reaches. The skeletal system also works with the circulatory system because remember your bones, inside of your bones is bone marrow. And bone marrow is where all of your blood cells, red or white, are produced. And the biggest bone in your body is your femur, so the bone in your thigh. And that produces a lot of what, uh, red and white blood cells. So you have to have your skeletal system interacting with your circulatory system in order to stay alive because without the bones, you don't have blood cells. And without the circulatory system, your blood cells that are made are not going anywhere. The skeletal system also interacts with the immune system because like I just said, your bones produce your white blood cells as, long, as well as your red blood cells. And your white blood cells literally make up your immune system because they're the ones attacking the invaders and killing them off in your body. Um, and then the, the skeletal system also works with the circulatory and respiratory system because your bones are not only made for structure, but they are also made for protection. So soft organs like your heart, your um, lungs, they are protected by like your rib cage, for example, so that nothing that hits it will cause direct impact on those organs. Because if you hit the heart too hard, you can actually cause it to stop. So the rib cage covers those really, really important soft organs to make sure that they don't get injured easily because those things are also directly related to survival. Okay, so give me one example of an interaction that the skeletal system has with another body system and tell me how it helps you survive. This is the end of this Ed Puzzle. So once you finish, make sure that you go ahead and finish up section one of your interactive notebook for this week, and then make sure that you do your exit ticket and turn it in.